Yeah. Uh, why do you think the mushrooming demand function captures the uh, these kind of demand system uh, within, I mean, uh, over such a long period of time? Well, OK, go ahead. So uh, you use the, so it is real income, right? I mean. Well, you know, I, the way I'm doing it, I'm thinking about it now, is I always think about a world where God is really nice to me, right? God just like sets up the world the way I want, and he does the things I think are nice, and it makes my life easy. And so this is kind of like in the best of worlds, this would be what I could do, right? In a world where this were really true. Now you got to think about how do I have to adapt this methodology to account for the fact that the world is really changing over time, and I need to think... Why is utility changing? People are different. I mean, utility level. Yeah, utility levels changed, right? Well, the utility is not constant along the Marshallian demand curve. Right, but the income is changing. Yes, you could have you could have real income changing, or you could think about it as prices changing, right? Homogeneity says I could always think of it as nominal income constant, and prices are falling, right? Real income increasing is the same as prices falling. So in some sense, you could think about, now this univariate world is kind of weird because more prices are changing than just this one. But that's basically the idea. We're consuming more than we used to. Now if it was uniform, then the price index question wouldn't arrive. If we were just getting richer and we were consuming more of everything in equal proportion, then the price index problem really wouldn't present itself. Where the price index problem comes, because some prices are falling more than others, and then I have to figure out, well, how do I balance those together? One goes down 50%, and one goes up 50%. How does that affect my overall cost of living? And if you think about 1950 to today, you have that kind of mixture. Many goods would cost way less today than they would cost in 1950. Many other goods would cost way more today than they cost in 1950, right? So, like, think about if we went back in time. If you went back in time and think about two goods, like one might be a haircut and one might be like a ballpoint pen, right? Right? You guys. Now, if you went back in time, let's go even further. Say you went back, when was the ballpoint pen invented? Around 1930 or something like that? Probably back there somewhere. Let's say we went back to the, when ballpoint pens were first invented. You know what a ballpoint pen is, right? Right, it's one of them pens, it's like a pen, you know, that, yeah, exactly, ballpoint pen. Well, if you go back to then, you know, a haircut probably cost 25 cents, and a ballpoint pen probably cost three dollars. All right? Now today, a haircut costs <laughs> You guys don't cut your hair? <laughs> how, much hair how much does a 1950s haircut cost today? So you go to Great Clips or someplace and you get like a, that's where I go, and you get like a 1950s haircut. How much does it cost? Like 10, like ten, ten bucks, right? It's like 13 bucks or something. It's like, let's call it 10. So that's a huge increase in the price of a haircut. And a ballpoint can cost... 25 cents, I don't know, something like that, right? I mean, just enormous changes in relative prices. We'll get back to later talking about why that's the case. But that's kind of representative of the problem you have to deal with. Even if we don't talk about computers and internet and all that stuff, even within the goods that existed back then, there's enormous changes in relative prices. And we've got to figure out how you weight all that together. And the answer is, well, how important are those price changes? Well, the demand curve gives you a lot of information about that, right? Because, right, that's, that's the whole idea about looking at the area under the demand curve, right? Because you're, again, think about the one good case. You say, well, geez, as price went down, I consumed more and more. Well, how much did I value that good, right? Price and quantity. How much did I value that good when I was buying 10 units, well, the marginal value to me of that 10th unit had to be equal to the price that I was paying. That's how I make my decision. That's the tangency with my indifference curve and budget line. And so you kind of know how much that 10th unit is really worth to people. And then over time, you're kind of bringing in goods 
as they come in. Okay? So that's what's nice about this way of thinking about the world. You can say, how important is the good? I'm not going to ask them how important it is. They revealed for me how much important it was by how much they were willing to consume when the price was higher than it was today. That's really what you're trying to do.